different from what we are. And we can let go of that and say, well, yeah, I'm here for the fun of it right now. Are you having fun? Do you call this fun? Uh, many people do. But see, here's something. Now, I'm going to just throw this in. It has nothing to do with love, really, but then again, it does. How many people, we would just say in the United States, because that's where I'm at, all right, just take the island of Hawaii or whatever. How many people need, need an EED to smoke MJ, drink any kind of liquor or beer? How many people? What percentage is it? Or I should say, what percentage don't do either? Because it's going to be such a tiny little number. And here's something... When we say, oh, I'm in love and this, that, well, I'm going to go to a party, I'm going to go, go to the game, I'm going to go to this. You're in love with this person, but you're going to spend money, and to go to a game now is expensive, or something like that. To go to a boxing match, it's expensive. To see what? Something beneficial in any way is football, basketball, baseball, hockey, boxing, wrestling. Useful for anything other than entertaining one's ego. It takes money out of everybody's pocket and makes few people very rich. Now, is that where you want to go? I'm not talking just going being rich, but the idea of our love situation. Well, I can go out for the night. I have to go out for the night. Uh, Guys always get a beer and stuff like that. Why? Makes them relax. Makes them forget. So what do we want to forget? That we're alive? That we made a commitment to love? That we made a relationship? That we have a relationship? Or we're drinking because we don't have a relationship? See, the scenarios that we build have nothing to do with the truth. And you know, that's my most important word, truth. No matter what it is, where it is, what it pertains to, what is the truth? There is a truth, whether we see it, perceive it, or ever find out what it is, is a different story. The truth is all around us? Of course it is. But are we listening to it? Uh, probably not. So... We, we say we, we love our partner, we love our mate, whatever the words are. You still got to go out and party. You still got to go out with the boys or the girls. It's, well, that's the only fun I get. Uh, the only fun you get, and you're supposed to be in love. I never, I, I, my life has been real. How could that be a real statement? It's a statement for people that do not know what love is. So, I'm trying to get to the point how complicated this really is. When we deal with that aspect of the truth about it, what do we need, what do we understand about it? When you wrote that on a piece of paper, you'd be able to see it a little more clear. And I tell you over and over, because I, I totally believe the mind sees it when it's written down. When you repeat it in your mind and it disappears, it's not, not like, not right not really there because of a paper you stick it on a wall every day you're going to see it and you're going to say hey and you're going to know what, what we're talking about and remember it because otherwise you won't it'll be gone how many minutes after the show stops uh, i got to watch something else and then your mind goes to something else and you forget whatever we even talked about is that a good thing? no so we're trying to get to the point of understanding love. How important is it to us? What are we willing to give for it? Exercise, diet, putting on a little weight, depending on what, what weight you live where you're at. Some people like skinny people. Some people like heavy people. So i got to look for somebody that likes heavy people, or I like somebody that likes skinny people, or I like whatever. And that's true, because if you're a certain kind of a person... You shouldn't get somebody that likes super built women when you're skinny or, or, or a skinny person when you're super built. 
not saying the relationship can't work and work its way through life. It's amazing how we can be in the ghettos and work all the way through life and die 60, 70, 80, whatever. And nothing happened, nothing good happened, that was this, that. But we're not trying to survive life. We're trying to learn the lesson we came here for. And there's not a thousand, there's not a hundred. It's not about, oh, i got to clean my shoes when I come in the house. i got to wash my hands before I... I it, that's not the lessons you're going to be, that are going to be important to you as soul. Sure, with disease and things, you want to wash and things, and all those kind of things fit our reality. But when you leave this world, you're no longer in this reality. You're in a different reality. So everything you perceive you learned has nothing to do with what's really going on. So with that, are you ready to move forward? So, looking for love. Who's going to give it to us? I mean, the gay rights and movement and things are... I don't feel good around women, or I don't feel good around men. Well, then you proceed to go to the same same gender. And sometimes that makes it easier for a person. Well, I'm a guy, I know what a guy likes. You're not a girl, so you don't know what a girl likes. Or you're a girl, and you know what a girl likes. But you don't know what a guy likes. And those little conditionings get created by parents as well when a child's growing. And uh, there's a new show where the husband wants to change their their gender after being married and having kids uh, 12, 15 years later. Well, he always knew it. He always knew it, and he put his wife and his children through that. Uh, again, love is a lot more than we give it the credence to be. It needs respect. It needs the honor that it is. You try not to abuse it, or you should not abuse it. If you know you're abusing it, you have to stop abusing it. So, the lessons we learn on a daily basis, how many relationships do the average person have? Would you say from 1 to 20? 20 to 40? Or over 100? I mean, some people are over 100. Some people are 20 to 40. Some people are 1 to 5. Personally, I try to keep mine down for a lot of reasons, and one is being truly in love with somebody, but that's right. Not saying it could change or it's not right, because you can only be what you know you are. You can't be and accept and understand what the other person is if they're lying to you. And in the love world, people lie a lot. Well, I don't want them to know my past. I don't want them to know I did this. I don't want them to know I did that. But it's stumbling blocks between you and the other person because unconditional love between two people that truly feel that they can love each other no matter what is critical to know everything. Because it's that one little thing that pops out 10, 20 years later that can destroy the relationship, which I went through. I went through so many things in relationships. But it's that one little thing that can transform everything you believe that you created with the relationship that you're in. So, um, I did this show because I, I think a lot of things in my life on a daily basis. I go through so many different things. And I always say to myself, what is the most important thing in life? I mean, I know what's the most important thing in death, but what's the most important thing in life? Football? Baseball? Hockey, swimming, dancing, drinking, partying, driving a motorcycle, driving a car. What is, what's the most important thing? Being married? Having children? Well, they're all pieces of parts of, of an idea of what love is. When you have a child, that should have been a bond between two people in love to begin with, to start it. Because then that would that energy would be going into the child. But if it's two people partying, drinking and partying, and then suddenly they're pregnant, what energy do you think was fed into the child? Even if the child, the, the soul of the child is not in the womb yet, but 
the the body that it's moving into is already being affected by the energy around it. How many people, when they talk about love, talk about the truth? Try to get into what's really important. Sure, they might say you have to really uh, love yourself, which is common sense, or it should be. But when it comes to putting these little white lies in the scenario of creating who you are, is detrimental to the relationship. And that alone will end it in a period of time. Are you willing to go beyond the limits? That 100% mark, which I always talk about. If you can say yes, then you can create the right relationship, move into the right relationship, find the right person. But it's not easy. Nothing good is easy. Nothing. Why is that? Because if, if we weren't put here to learn certain things, it would all be given to us on a platter. But it's not. A man has created this horrible scenario of ego that makes love so unworthy of the word love. Cheating, lying, abuse do not fit in the relationship when two people say they love each other. They don't fit together. They do not. I don't care how hard you try it. They don't fit together. They should not be together. Well, why is it in the United States, right? and I know it's the same or worse in other countries, Our relationships falling apart. More violence in them, more, more abuse, all those words. If you think it's because people love their dogs more than they love their husband or their wife, and I could say I bet in some relationships it's exactly that way. Or you can leave, but you're not taking the dog. Uh, now, if you have a child and a dog, and you love them both the same, when you separate who gets who then it's, an, it's again splitting something that was one into two that doesn't need to be two uh, the scenarios are uh, the multiple scenarios which we're going to go into but when a relationship is falling apart what do you do do you hide do you face it do you end it do you really just walk away? Uh, I can tell you from my experience, from who I am, I cannot just walk away. And that seems like the easiest scenario, but it's also the most hurting. Leaving something with the ends untied and not knowing builds a wall around you. And it keeps you from being who you are. I can go into a couple of stories of people that I just talked to and heard and heard the stories around them right now. But it's not being able to face the situation when the point of time of it to happen should be. Uh, if there's no control over it, it's a different story. If you find it in your relationship, you're bored. And you're looking for somebody else. And you find somebody else. And you know you're going to have to tell your, your wife or your husband that it's over. Well, all that's really hurting the idea of what love is, including to yourself. You don't know yet. You don't understand it. You can't put things through something like that and say, I just don't know, I didn't know. And it's only excuses. So as long as we're willing to hold on to the lie over the truth, we're never going to see the truth. We're never going to experience true love. When a relationship's falling apart, it can happen two ways. Well, one is like, say your wife or your husband dies. They got sick for a day, a couple of days, and they died. Are you ready for that? Can you deal with that? Is it their fault or your fault? 
hopefully not. 